the jal gives you in the modern age the i use the word high to get high the one who is drinking the alcohol he wants to get intoxicated so sexual intoxication is what they see and the vehicle which is used to pursue sexual intoxication is a vehicle by the name of lust l u s t lust that's the jal weapon and the rest of this lecture is now being delivered for you who are 16 and 17 years of age not for the elders they know the subject already but if you are 16 and 17 years of age listen to me lust is like you know the quran uses the term wine rivers of wine so using the same term that the quran used lust is like a wine you drink it to get sexual intoxication but the problem is you drink and you still thirsty you drink and you are still thirsty the sexual thirst is still there and the more that you drink the greater does the thirst become It's like coca cola <laughs> so you have 200 women like magic johnson and at the end of the day the thirst is still there the sexual intoxication is eluding you no matter what tablets you use and this and that and the other and then you turn away from women and you turn to men and then you turn away from men and you turn to children and you turn away from children and you turn to animals thumma radadnahu asfal as-safili so we say to you that lust is a vehicle of destruction do we need to pursue that discussion any further hmm? what is the alternative to lust and our lecture is over allah has sent the quran to explain all things it's such a pity that we don't have time for the quran we have time for everything else we have time for the hairdresser but we don't have time for the quran uh, if you want to know what is it that gives you the greatest satisfaction of all in the relationship between a man and a woman it is to the quran you must turn yes the quran will explain and when we turn to the quran allah speaks of jannah and he speaks of men and women in jannah and the highest of all bliss in the male female relationship in jannah guess what it is the highest state of bliss and of happiness in the male female relationship in jannah as described in the quran is muttaqiina 'ala al-ara'iq mutaqabilin that they are in physical proximity with each other reclining on couches facing each other this is all that we have we have to connect 
the dots. We have to now use our imagination to connect the dots. In other words, it is the... And now I'm going to have to use some poetic language to touch the hearts of those 17-year-old and 16-year-old teenagers. Okay, so excuse me now. <coughs> the Quran is directing attention to a gentle touch. A gentle caress. A little kiss. A hug. And if she is a woman who is still a woman, and if between you and Allah knows what is in the heart, وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِ Allah hovers between a man and his heart. So if there is lust in your heart, Allah can see it. And lust and love cannot live together in the same heart. Lust and love cannot live together in the same heart, either one or the other. If there is love in the heart, and if there is rahma, rahma, kindness and compassion in the heart, then what? would be the effect of a gentle touch. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا And amongst his signs is this, <coughs> that he created for you, from your very midst he created your mates, your spouses, that you might dwell together in sukun, peace, Contentment, tranquility, bliss. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And he placed betwixt your hearts love and kindness. So if when you sit with her, in your heart there is no lust, if instead there is love and there is kindness, then a touch can do wonders. A gentle touch can do wonders, provided she is a woman who is still a woman. You don't need all of that sexual activity going down the road for 200 women and then go into alternative sexuality and homosexuality and this and that and the other. No! One sip, just one sip is enough to quench the thirst. With that wine you drink and you drink and you drink and you drink and the more you drink the more your thirst grows. And with this one, one sip is enough and she is in heaven. With just a gentle... And remember, I'm now talking to the teenagers, so excuse me. I'm talking to the teenagers in France and in Britain and in Canada and the United States. We have one from Belgium here, we have another one from Belgium in the back there. With one touch, you will take her to the stars and she will dance with the stars. And her thirst will be quenched because Allah says, Mut that they recline together on couches facing each other in Jannah.
provided that there is no lust, provided that there is respect, provided that there is kindness, provided that there is compassion, provided that there is lust, then a gentle touch is enough. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi when you he said, when you marry, marry a virgin. So you can spot and play with her. Those were his words. Because as a woman grows older and older, her capacity to respond becomes slower and slower. Until Sauda radiallahu ta'ala anha our mother ummul mu'min she gave her night to aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha so aisha got two nights and sauda didn't need any more why because she had passed the age she felt where she could respond to such stimulation easily and gently become pleasurable Sorry. So one has to take into consideration the factor of age and show compassion when a woman reaches that age when she can no longer respond as um, quickly as with a young woman. Now then, how do we get the woman with whom we're going to recline on the couch? hugging her and kissing her and sitting facing each other. How do we do it? Answer, through marriage. But Dajjal came along with a master plan. Good men have only one wife. Decent men have only one wife. Respectable men have only one wife. Men who are role models in society have only one wife. That is Dajjal's rubbish. In order to take men and transform them into boys. If you don't understand, then start thinking. His objective is to take men and to transform them into boys. Hmm? There are worlds inside a man that Allah has created, which can only be opened by a woman. And if she does not open it, you live your life and you'll die <laughs> without ever having grown to what you could have grown. That's Mohyuddin ibn Arabi, Sheikh al-Akbar is called. Sheikh al-Akbar. <coughs> that is a woman who can open the doors of the world which are there in a the man so that the versatility of the male can be displayed. And he can grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Most of all, intellectually and spiritually that's what a woman does and so Allah says فَنْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَى وَرُبَعَى and so marry women who are pleasing to you two, three, four not every woman it is beautiful as a rose blossoming in the garden. No. Not every man is as handsome as Yusuf alayhi salam. But when Allah puts love in your heart, she will become beautiful in your eyes. And he will become handsome in your eyes. That's what love does. So you marry. Two, three, four. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا If you fear 
that you will not be able to act justly with your wives. Meaning, this is your wife and she is accustomed to this standard of living. And you take a second wife and now her standard of living must drop. No, she should not have to pay a price for your taking a second wife. No, you can take a second and a third and a fourth provided that you can maintain them the way you maintain her. How many men can do that in Akhiru Zaman? When riba rips us apart. Then stay with only one. With only one. And it is here that we find very strange things going on in the tafsir. Oh, yes, very strange things happening in the tafsir. Tell me, is it possible to marry a slave? What is the nature of a marriage contract? A marriage contract is one in which a woman has the freedom to accept or to reject. And if she does not have that freedom, the contract is invalid. Does a slave have the freedom? No, only a free woman. Only a free woman has the freedom to say, no, I don't want to marry you. <laughs> a slave does not have that freedom. So if you have to free her, so she becomes a free woman before you marry her, I ask you, you dumb, dumb, is she still a slave? How can you say he married an idol worshiper? Oh, no, 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 what, what, she took the Shahada. But if she took the Shahada, is she still an idol worshiper, you dumb dumb? No, she's now a Muslim. She's not an idol worshiper. Don't say he married an idol worshiper. She was an idol worshiper. So if she was a slave and you liberated her, you gave her her freedom, is she still Mamalakata Imanukum? Is she still a slave? No, she's not. So I ask the question, is it possible to marry a slave? The answer is no. A contract of Nikah is not possible other than with a woman who is free. Free to accept or to reject. And so when Allah says, for wahida, then marry only one. Awma malakat aymanukum. It is dishonest to say that Allah is saying, marry one woman and in addition to that, you can marry from your slaves. Because a contract of marriage can only be executed with a woman who has the freedom to say no. This is a subject that requires further research and we do not want to pursue the first discussion any further on the subject now. But Allah speaks in the Quran maybe about 12 or 14 times about married women plus Malakat Yat or Malkal Yameen. And with this, if she commits zina, this is her punishment. But if this one commits zina, what is the punishment? Half. Half.
<laughs> half the punishment okay so now we say in order to respond to the sexual revolution it is necessary for us to try to ensure that every woman who wants a husband gets a husband so in our muslim village and mashallah we have four projects now in malaysia in our muslim villages <coughs> every woman who comes to the village and says i want a husband she has a right to a husband he does not have a right to a wife no he has a duty to marry she has a right to her husband so every woman who comes to the village somebody will have to offer to marry her so we will have in our muslim villages plural marriages to the extent that men have the means to take a second and third wife without causing the first wife to lose anything of her standard of living but in addition to marriage the quran also gives us a second group of malikal yameen which needs to be researched by our scholars so that in responding to the sexual revolution tomorrow when the prophet said alay salatu waslam that they're going to be having sexual intercourse in public like donkeys we are responding to that before it happens we say this is our response what is yours we pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may guide us to understand better and better the jahl's strategies by which he seeks to destroy our faith and we pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might guide us to the right path that in the light of the quran and in the sunnah of the prophet 